today's episode, we talk about the new rooms of Pop Century, Saratoga Springs, Baseline Tap House, and Blaze Pizza. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a mouse. You are listening to the Main Street Magic Podcast with your hosts, Jeremy Stein and John Marone. Hello and welcome to another episode of Main Street Magic. I am your host, Jeremy Stein, and I am joined by my friend, co-host, and travel buddy, John Marone. Good afternoon. In today's episode, we'll review our recent trip, which included stays at Saratoga Springs, the new rooms at Pop Century, Morimoto Asia, and a whole lot more. Today's episode will be part one of a two-part series, so make sure you also check out part two. As always, you can find us on the web at www. Dot mainstmagic.com and follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook at Main ST Magic. We're going to try something a little bit different tonight as John is traveling for work. So we'll actually be recording from two separate locations. So John, this was uh, about two weeks ago now um, that we went on our latest monthly trip. Uh, we split up and I stayed at Pop Century with my family. You stayed at Saratoga Springs with yours. Uh, now, this was your first time at Saratoga Springs, correct? That is correct. So why don't, you, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about Saratoga Springs and what you thought if you're, you're going back, and uh, just let us know how it was. So Saratoga Springs, I picked it. I did DVC points for this trip, and Saratoga, like always, has availability, and we were looking in the studio play- space. So it was Mich- Michelle, myself, and the six-year-old twins in addition i also my sister and my oldest two children were there and they stayed off site at Hilton buena vista palace which again right across the street when i drove out of the exit to saratoga i drove right into their entrance and was able to pick them up or drop them off depending what we were doing that day and this way they didn't have to do the resort bus transportation um, for those hotels yeah. there at Disney Springs because they, those could be a little sketchy. Yeah, but both they, of those are walking on, distance to Disney Springs, right? That is correct, right across. So over the uh, new Causeway Bridge across the Hotel Plaza Boulevard, and they were right at Disney Springs, which they came over and met us there on uh, Friday night. So just some quick things, and I'll do kind of a pros and cons of Saratoga Springs, because not only is a DVC, obviously you can pay for it. They have the studio rooms, which sleep four, where you're going to have a bed and then a sofa bed are your choices there. Then they have the one bedroom, two bedroom, um, and three bedroom, which then would be the treehouse villas for that. So you have a variety of choices. It is relatively easy to get a room here. So usually availability is not a problem, whether you're paying cash or your DVC. So there are a lot of people who buy Saratoga Springs, especially on the secondary market as a home resort, because they always have a place to stay and the points are a little bit cheaper. So one, easy to get a room. The other positive I like about it is the pools. There's three pools there. But usually, if the resort has more than one pool, they have one main pool, and then the other ones are just, you know, pools. I mean, nothing yeah. special about them. At least here, you have the main pool, which is a wonderful big pool, water slide, food, um, right by the main hospitality house. So there's a lot to do right there. But even the pool right by us also had a water slide and food. And we weren't within walking distance of the hospitality house, but we weren't that far away from it. So to me, at least the, uh, the other pools that are available, you're not giving up a ton by not going to the main pool. Yeah. And as you said, you're close to Disney Springs. So you can there's actually a walkway. So if you're in one area of the resort, you can actually go over a bridge and just walk to Disney Springs. If you want to take the boat, you can take a boat right there. So lots of options, and you're not far away. And I think Disney Springs, again, on this trip, we were there for um, three nights, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. And we actually went to Disney Springs twice during this stay. So um, a lot more is popping up to do there, especially in the food. Now, if there's some negatives or just some cons about Saratoga Springs, it is a large resort. So if you are doing Disney transportation, there's five bus stops. 
not as many as Old Key West, but there's still plenty. And then in the hospitality house, it's actually interesting. There is a sit-down restaurant, but if you want some quick service, when you walk in, there is a small dining area, there is a gift shop, and then there is two counters. So there is one counter where you go past and you choose your foods. So you pick your food, there's a grab-and-go um, case that you can get sandwiches or muffins or that, or you can order. But after you get all that you order, they print out a receipt for you, give you a number, and now you go get in the other line to pay. And the other line to pay is the same line as the people who are buying things at the gift shop. That's weird. So, yeah, it's weird. So it's not that same, you know, where... I'm going to order from you and I'm going to pay. I now have to take that receipt to a separate register. Yeah, like, I mean, every other quick service restaurant that I've ever been to in all of Disney goes by the method where you you get your food all from the same spot that you order it. And then on your way out, you just pay. That's really strange that they have such a different you know way of doing things there. Yeah. And so not a lot of room. So our first day of going there, um, we went, we were in the for breakfast. We were there early. It was quick. We found a table, and there's not many tables. I wouldn't be surprised if the whole seating area is maybe 50 people. It is just not a lot of area to sit. In the restaurant, I believe there's some overflow seating as well, but just not, you know, this isn't built for a big, big group. Yeah. And obviously, with it being a DVC resort, the, you know, the whole reason is most people would be bringing breakfast or they have a full kitchen or whatever that might be. Right. Um, it was the same thing I had with towels, right? I'm in a studio. I had used towels, and again, with Halloween, you know, going to the Halloween party, we needed more bath towels. I called up. I had to call three times before I finally got them delivered. Each time was, you know, this is a $6 charge, and I said, I'm in a studio. And each time they said, okay, complimentary, we'll send them to you. But I had to call three times before anybody actually showed up with the yeah. towel. Um, so my wife, on the second time when we went for breakfast, the line now, and we showed up later, so we were there at 9.30 or whatever when the mass of people were there, and so the line stretched to get your food into and around the gift shop. So if you were looking at items, you had to either move people out of the way to get um, what you wanted to look at because they're in line for food, and then the line to then go to the next line and pay was pretty long as well so she said let's get out of here and oh by the way that's the last time we're staying here i hate this place <laughs> so really had nothing to do with the room had nothing to do with any of that really had to do with just the way it was set up to just get some food yeah um, i waited a number of hours before i told her oh by the way we are already booked to stay here again in i believe april when she and your wife are doing the um 5k yeah, yep yeah for, um, star wars you know, for the, yeah the star wars 5k so i broke that news to her later and i guess we'll just go ahead and bring breakfast and i don't have to worry yeah. about uh you know dealing with that part again so to me those are the pros and cons i mean it's a nice resort you're close to disney springs if you're go spending and you are just going to be hammering all your time at the parks you're far and now you got to make the determination of do you have your own car a rental car or are you going to rely on the disney bus transportation um, so that's it for me for Saratoga. Any questions you have, or we can turn it back to you for uh, pop. No, I mean, again, I think a lot of what we usually try and talk about, and the reason we do these trip reviews and we talk very specifically about things uh, at a resort like this is so that people can set expectations. Because anybody who's listening now and may be booked for Saratoga Springs, they're not going to get there and have the same kind of negative experience you guys had. They're going to understand what – that looks like down at the, you know, down to get breakfast or get another meal. Uh, so they may decide to pack something in their room. So I think that's perfect to give people an idea and give them some expectations. Um, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Pop Century. Uh, we know this is, for you and I, as far as values go, this is one of our favorite value resorts. Um, we, we had put in a request. So this was the, the first time, oddly enough, that I used a travel agent to book our room. Um, and the reason was we thought we were going to maybe be doing a trip uh, far out in February with my parents, my brother, his kids. And I'd heard about a travel agent in one of the Facebook groups we're on, uh, Melissa with Ears of Experience. And I had just reached out to her to say, you know, how does this work? I'm looking at booking potentially three different rooms in February. 
it's kind of a pain for me to have to go through and figure out all the pricing and get all the reservations. Is that something you do? And, and that's what travel agents do, of course. So um, that trip didn't work out, but I just was wondering what it would be like to have her book for another room. And we were just looking for something that was value and at the right price. Uh, so she was able to search the different hotels and found Pop Century at uh, you know pretty good rate for us. So that's where we had her book it. Um, and there's no fee to us, which was great. I mean, it's you know you're technically saving money because you're saving time. I mean, I might have spent an hour on the phone with you know Disney trying to figure out what our best bet was. So I really liked that part about it. Uh, so we put in uh, a room request to get one of the new rooms in a reno- you know one of the renovated rooms in one of the buildings, uh, which are now building seven, eight, and nine. Uh, she put in a request for us as well. So luckily, when we showed up, we were going to be in building eight, I believe, over in the 80 section, uh, which was a renovated room. And that was something we really wanted to check out. Okay, so let's talk about, so how do you submit a room request? Well, um, I'll I'll give you the way that I do it, and I do it through touring plans. Um, And, you know, we're not affiliated with touring plans, but, John, you and I both use this app religiously. Um, you, You turn me on to it. It's like 15 bucks for the entire year. You can plan out your entire day at the parks and you can you can even go onto the website and say all right here's my reservation for pop century and then i nailed it down i selected a building and then i even selected a room and they've basically got a picture from if you were standing at that front door looking out so that you could see what you would be walking out into so i had put in a request near one of the pools but i knew i had to put in a request in one of those seven eight nine buildings so what touring plans will do then i think it's like two or three days prior to your trip they'll fax that room request on your behalf into the resort. Um, now I've done I've done room requests for prior trips where I got very specific about maybe overlooking a pool. Uh, I've never gotten the exact room, obviously, that I requested because you can request a, a room number even. Um, but I've always been close to what the request was or been closer to that building. So so this was perfect for us to be in one of the renovated rooms. Um, and I'll give some pros and cons about the renovated rooms. I won't, I don't need to talk too much. I think about the resort in general, because we've, you know, a lot of people have been there. They've got your normal quick service. Uh, it's a large resort. So if you are in one of these further buildings, you're going to do a little bit of walking because there's only one transportation bus that is at the front by the main hall. Uh, but you're a short walk over the bridge to art of animation where, you know, you got additional food at landscapes of flavor, which is one of my favorite quick services in any of the resorts. Um, but the new rooms that were done, it, I have kind of a love hate with them. As it was, as the the trip went on, and again we stayed those four days and three nights. There were certain things that I loved, and there were just certain things that I hated. And the things that I didn't like kind of grow on you a little bit more as the longer you stay. Um, but I want to start positive. They, I mean, they did an outstanding job. I mean, the rooms are gorgeous. They're clean. They're modern. Um, they have the laminate flooring now, so you get rid of that carpet that's had, you know, who knows how many feet walking across it barefoot. Um, beds now are queen beds, and I'm pretty sure it's whatever the mattresses that they're using at the moderates because they're so much more comfortable. Um, so, so that part was great. Uh, there's tons of storage everywhere, and you'd mentioned this before that they're kind of going with these refurbs into that cruise line type of design, so there's you know, the bed isn't closed off underneath anymore. We unpacked our suitcases into the dresser and we slid our empty suitcases under the bed out of the way. Uh, There's cubbies on each side of the beds where, I mean, whether you're going to fold up your pajamas and put them in there or you want to, you know, store kids' iPads. And then every outlet in the room has your regular outlets and then two USBs. So I think I counted 10 USB ports throughout the entire room, uh, which is great because, you know, we've got are all of our electronics. The kids have iPads that we want to plug in every night. Um, so I thought that part was really good. Uh, the space in the bathroom, there's still only a single sink, just as there was before the refurb. But again, there's there's a big area to hang up clothes. And we all had our Halloween costumes. So we had plenty of space to hang the Halloween costumes up. There's little cubbies and, and drawers and doors everywhere, you know, to kind of tuck things away. Whereas in the past, in those rooms, we're always tripping over our own luggage. You know, we would take stuff out for the bathroom and then you just have the, uh, our bag sitting in the middle of the bathroom. Um, so overall, I think they did a really, really good job with the redesign. 
But there are a few things that kind of bothered me while we were there. And this is one that as the trip went on, I didn't really care as much. But it, it lost any Disney feel for the most part. I mean, there's uh, above the one queen bed, there is a little, you know, uh, there's some pictures of Mickey. And they're kind of 70s. They're almost Andy Warhol looking, you know, little Mickey heads, three of them. And then they've replaced the second normal bed with a fold down Murphy bed. And when you fold that down, there's a, a mural of Pluto there. Outside of those two pieces, this this looks like you're staying at a Hilton or somewhere else. There's there's no Disney feel. And I started to become okay with that as the trip went on because you walk out the door and you're in the middle of, you know, the 80s decade. And so that didn't really bother me as much in, in the end. Um, they changed use of space. So now that the Murphy bed goes up, you have a table in its place that everything folds into itself in a sense. So fold the bed up. You have a table that sits to fold the bed down and the table's just hidden underneath, which is a great use of space, except you still only have two seats, which is what we had in the old rooms. So the first night we were there, we ordered pizza in the room. Well, the kids are sitting at the table and, you know, Rhonda and I are sitting in the bed eating pizza because there's, there's nothing additional. Um, so I, I think if they could have made that table slightly larger and allowed for four seats and then maybe, you know, maybe when the bed is down, you can put those four seats somewhere that would have made more sense to me. So also, so with the table there, every time you fold the bed down, you have to make sure nothing's on the table, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you have to move the chairs out of the way. So the, the space that they gave you, you're now taking up because you have to put those chairs somewhere. And when you fold the bed up, well, guess what doesn't fit in it? Everything that our kids bring, which is, you know, they've got two pillows each that are provided by Disney. Those don't fit when you fold it up. They each have a pillow pet. Those aren't fitting. Um, they've got, you know, extra blankets. They've got uh, stuffed animals. So all that stuff, when the, when the bed goes up, all that stuff just goes on our bed, which renders our bed now useless because we've got, you know, 27 pillows on it and stuffed animals and all. So that part, I just – and then every, every day and night, you're folding the thing up and down for the most part. Now, we could have left the bed down probably the entire trip, but we eat breakfast in the room. So the girls needed somewhere to sit and eat breakfast. So that part, I, I totally understand what they were going for. And they they were so close, I think, to succeeding. And everything else I've said has been so positive about it. I mean, I've, I've been one of the few that I've seen that has kind of, I guess, complained or had issue with the way that they did this bed. Everybody else loves it. Um, now, one thing they did make up for is it used to be you had a dresser and inside most half of that dresser was your mini fridge. So really, it was usually like you had three drawers, and then you had um, mini fridge. Well, now they make better use of that dresser space. So I think you have about six drawers. Five of them you can use because the other one uh, has the safe. Another thing I like, they went away uh, from the keyed safe where you used to have to, you know, put your valuables in there during the day, lock it with the key, and then just hope you don't lose that key during the course of the day, or you're paying, I think, you know, probably fifty bucks or something for a new key or for them to get into it. Now it's all digital, so you select a code. Uh, just don't forget it, obviously. So that part was nice. And then they had what I'll just call a food station. They now move the mini fridge into a cabinet that has shelving and a countertop above it. So we bring a ton of snacks every time we come, and we bring tons of uh, food, water. Uh, we'll bring beer and wine that we can have in the room or take to the pool. So this left such a better space for all of that. Again, my only issue was the fridge was like a mini, mini fridge. Like it was like if a mini fridge had a baby, it was this fridge. So you could go about three water bottles deep in the fridge. So we could barely fit anything in it. And, and again, they're trying to make so much use of space, which I love. But I don't, I don't like when they go for, you know, form over function. There was a lot of things to me that weren't as functional. And the final thing was the shower. So now they put in a really nice glass sliding door in the shower. Well, with that, you lose about four inches of shower space, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're like me and you're 6'3", 220, four inches makes a lot of difference when you're trying to, you know, wash your hair or something. So I'm bumping into the walls the whole time. And, um, and then I don't know if it was the specific shower head that they put in or if they're trying to maintain water usage. But you could barely wash yourself in the thing because there was no pressure whatsoever they put in it's a dual shower head now with like the wand that you can take off, um, 
which I'm, I mean, I'm just not going to use that. So I think you lose pressure because now it's trying to decide between two different shower heads as opposed to one. Um, so those were the little things. I think they're headed in the right direction, uh, you know, and as they start to refurbish other rooms, we'll see. Again, it's all about expectation. We know what to expect if we stay in one of those rooms again. So I'm hoping that, you know, some of those same issues, we'll just decide, well, you know what? The kids are just going to sit in their bed and eat breakfast. We don't need to fold this bed up and down or, you know, so I, th- I think overall the rooms are better than they were. Um, I wish they would give them a little bit of color. The, the walls were kind of all white. It was almost like a hospital room type of feeling. Countertops are, are white. Um, so I think the design, they almost went too modern. But, again, that may just be me. You missed your wife's biggest complaint. Oh, yeah, I probably, I probably tried to forget that one. <laughs> so, and again, we don't like to complain, <laughs> but just to make people aware of this. So in the remodeled room, they've taken out the carpet. The floors are now wood or some yeah. sort of fall wood, but there's no carpet or mat when you come in. Right. So I know you guys, it was raining one night. Yeah. When you yeah. come in and, right, you're going to walk over those wood floors with wet shoes. It's do you take them out off outside the room and then should come in or not? And with them starting, and again, I see this with DVC as well, where you don't have housekeeping every day. Um, you get, I mean, you just get junk on the floor yeah. right by the door, that sand or dirt on the bottom of your shoes normally, but then you mix it with water and it's slippery and just muddy and dirty. Yeah. Well, and and. The only other issue that I've seen people talk about, and we didn't experience this, we were on the bottom floor, um, is noise. You know, people are afraid that taking out the carpet, carpet, you're going to lose some of that, I guess, you know, absorbing the noise because now you've got this laminate flooring. We didn't hear anything. So I don't think that was an issue. I don't know if that was just something people were worried about or they actually experienced it. Um, but but I, thought, I thought that was fine. And then before we move on from this, the one other thing I wanted to mention just because I thought it was, was kind of interesting was – um, our, our daughter Lacey had a um, strep throat leading up to this uh, strep, you know, leading up to this trip. So she was kind of on her last day of meds and she was just about to make that turn. So we got down there uh, that Friday evening and we canceled our fast passes at Hollywood Studios and decided we would just relax in the room, let her get some rest uh, and order pizza. I, I think I'm in the minority that likes Disney pizza. It's probably because I'm at Disney. Like if somebody delivered that to my house, I would not pay them for it. I'd probably tell them to leave. But for some reason... You know, it's like something that's Mickey-shaped in the parks. It just tastes better there. Um, so we ordered pizza that night, and two things when you're there. One, uh, I wanted wings, and they had wings on the in-room menu. They don't have them up at the quick service. So we ordered eight buffalo wings. They're actually very, very good. Um, tasted like they had just come out of the fryer. Very good. And then we got a cheese pizza because our, our kids just eat cheese. And what I thought was interesting because the pizza was $13.99. I'm like, man, that's a really good deal because they're like 18 bucks if you go up to the quick service. So they come and we pay and we, we had cash and paid. And I'm like counting my change and I'm just thinking, man, I, I, something's weird. So I look on the menu and sure enough, there's a $3 delivery charge. And then they automatically add um, 18% service charge as well on top of that. So in the end, our pizza was 1950 which which still is better than me walking all the way up to quick service and it was raining that night and coming back. But I, I just thought it was interesting because I didn't realize that, and it's that fine print that you may not realize. You also have to do a $15 minimum order. So if we had just ordered the $10 buffalo wings, you know that wouldn't have been enough. We would have had to add something. Um, but, but as long as we're talking about food, uh, we want to move on to one of the next items, which is you know getting, getting a quick meal. For you, it was over at Disney Springs. This was some time that we did not spend with our families together. Uh, we ended up checking out Hollywood Studios on Saturday. So where did you guys eat at Disney Spring? Because I know it's one of your favorites. Yeah, so actually I think this was the same as you. So while you guys stayed in your room and had pizza Friday night, we went to Disney Springs and had pizza at Blaze. Yeah, so that's where I was starting to think this was a bad decision to get in-room pizza because you were enjoying what is, I think, some of my favorite pizza anywhere. So... you know, again, Blaze is not unique to Disney. Blaze is a franchise. They are popping up all around the country. Um, so it's 
really it's that we've talked about it before because I think it's one of the best um, value meals as well. Go through the line. You can either pick the pizza that they have available or you can make your own. So there was um, Michelle, myself, and the twins. We got two pizzas, which two pizzas are plenty for four people. Yeah, they're like 12 um, or 14 inch, four. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're decent sized pizza. They're thin crisp, you know, thin crust. Um, so you don't get that thick crust. They're ready in three minutes. And then depending what we get in the pizza at the end, you could add different things to them, such as a nice balsamic drizzle on them. So, which is highly you know, recommended. So we did two pizzas, four drinks, and it was 30 bucks with tax. Actually, it was $30 on the dot. Oh, wow. Um, so it was perfect. So on that, that discounts, and, do they have discounts there? I want it. Yeah, they do. Okay. I believe they have I think the it's annual pass, pa- pass holder. Annual okay. pass, ten percent. Yeah, I couldn't remember. On it. Yeah. So, um, and then again, we just had fountain drinks, but if you want beer, wine, they have that as well. So that's what we did. I on that night for Friday night, and then we had walked around in some stores, and we were waiting for um, my sister and my my oldest kids to get there. So we um, hit Blaze. We hit it at a good time. We didn't wait in line too long got a booth right away so um always a victory there for that uh quick service yeah definitely and even when you go there and the line is long like you said pizzas are ready in three minutes so it moves very quick i mean you you might look at it and think that it's going to take a long time but it's basically like a fast casual you know it's it's just like going to a chipotle almost you go through the line and a few minutes later your pizza is ready um, one of the other add-ons we always get at the end, and it just works, is the um, cracked sea salt, which just brings out the flavor in whatever you're getting. So you do the cracked sea salt, some of the um, balsamic vinegar, and I think you're set with any pizza there. Um, yep. So, you, so yeah, you guys did that Friday night while we were eating the, the in-room pizza and wings, and then Saturday morning we hit up uh, Food and Wine Fest, and I knocked off the items on my list I wanted. And I'm not going to talk about those now, but I did post photos and I posted a review of the items I had um, at mainstmagic.com. And we have a section now, it's going to be called like our blog and show notes. And one of the things we want to get to is as we talk about some of these things, we want to add some additional photos and notes over on our website. So make sure you continue to check that out. Um, So after Epcot, I had really wanted to try Baseline Tap House over at Hollywood Studios, which opened only a few weeks ago. Um, so we, we shot over there specifically just to do that. I think we hopped on Star Tours real quick because the line was short and then went and sat at Baseline. Um, for me, this was uh, about all positive, as positive as a review or something can get. So the atmosphere there is great. It's, um, it's part of the Grand Avenues now, which is supposed to be made to look like kind of downtown old school L.A., uh, I assume it does. I don't know what that really looks like, but this is what I'm going to think it looks like from now on. Uh, there's a ton of outdoor seating. There are umbrellas. Uh, we were not there at night, but I imagine at night it's incredible because they have lights strung up over top of it. Not a ton of seating inside. Uh, and there's a bar, but the bar is only served for basically ordering. Uh, now, we saw a few people that were kind of just standing at the bar having their drinks. But there's about four registers around the bar. And this, is, this was the only negative for me. And, and again, it had only been open for like a week or two. Okay. So the, the bar area has like four registers, and there was when you walked in the one door, there was no line. Like it almost should be set up like Blaze Pizza, where you walk in and you're you know filtered around, and then they could just say, hey, go to the next bartender at that register. So everybody kind of just wandered around trying to figure out like what line was the shortest, and then you just kind of hopped in it and hope you didn't get in somebody's way. But literally, that was the only thing to me that just wasn't set up right. And again, they'd only been open for a week, so... This is um, craft brews, all from California area. They do have wine on tap. Uh, they have cocktail drinks on tap. And then they have, they only have three menu items. One is the charcuterie board, which I'm sure when you go, you'll be getting there. It looked very good. Um, and then they have the Bavarian pretzel, which is similar to the one at Germany. And then they have um, house made sweet and spicy toasted almonds. So we ordered the pretzel. Uh, I told them no mustard, give us double. Uh, beer cheese fondue and then we got the spicy toasted almonds uh, Rhonda asked what beer tasted most like Mick Ultra 
which was odd to me. And guy kind of laughed at her and, and gave us one. Um, so I got the Green Flash Passion Fruit Kicker, and she got the North Coast Scrimshaw Pilsner, which I guess is the closest to Mick Ultra. But yeah, I you thought know. you were going to say they gave her a glass of water. I know. I know they really could. That would have been funny. That was a missed opportunity there. But right. so here's here's one thing I love about this place because. You know, if you get if you're going to get a beer or a drink in the parks, we know how expensive those can get. And as I found out at Epcot recently, it looked like the portions are now getting smaller and the price is staying the same. But here you can get a 22 ounce craft beer, you know, on tap for nine dollars and fifty cents. So that's a really good price for a beer as far as Disney goes. Um, so we each had our beer. We we got the pretzel. We got the uh, toasted almonds. Um, the kids had a wild strawberry lemonade that they make right there on site with, and I think it was, I mean, I think it was like fresh lemonade and then they add some juices and, and mix it up for you. And we went and found a spot outside. Uh, it was a, it was a pretty good day for it. It was just starting to cool down. It was close to the evening. This will be the spot when you need a break at Hollywood studios to sit outside, have a drink, grab a snack and just people watch for a while. Um, they did a really good job here. I'll be very interested as this progresses because everything else, Grand Avenue is technically open, but everything else is just kind of the store facades. I mean, it's going to be like it was when it was, you know, the streets of, uh, um, what was it, streets of USA or the old, it's that same old section where they had all the faux building fronts and it was New York. And so I think that part's going to stay the same, but this will be the new entrance into Galaxy's Edge when it opens, you know, a year and a half or so from now. So I think they did a great job. It, it was nice to see something being added to Hollywood Studios after everything that's been taken away over the past year while we still have, you know, probably seven, eight months to wait for Toy Story Land. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I'll be excited to go back there. So if you want more, you have to go back in line. So they did have, I did see wait staff coming out, which we were unaware of at first. So I'm not sure if we had sat down initially, if somebody would have come out or how that part worked. Um, so I'll have to figure that out next time. And then the one other thing you can get there uh, is beer flights. So they have such a large selection of beer. You can, you can pick your own beer flights. So you select four beers. They're probably six ounce pours. Um, and I think that was around 10 to $11. Uh, like ten fifty. So again, not a bad price if you wanted to try a couple of those. But I can tell you that we will definitely be back. Uh, we'll make sure we get that charcuterie board that you love so much. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. But make sure you check for part two, which also released today, as we talk about Morimoto Asia, the wine slushies at Disney Springs, and a little bit about Lanuba. That's all for now. We'll see you real soon. <laughs>